The Strain was written by Chuck Hogan and Guillermo del Toro, and, you know, unfortunately, Guillermo's skill as a filmmaker doesn't really translate to skill as a novelist. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Now, before I get into the real meat of the review, I just want to give a few quick announcements about the channel. Um, as of this recording, the Aragon video should have just come out uh, yesterday, I think. And after that, there will be another review, which I don't really want to talk about because it's actually really weird and out there. So we'll, we'll just... you'll see that in a couple of days. Uh, after that is the uh, My Immortal read-through, and then there should be this, and then I'm gonna review uh, another patron-requested uh, book, which is kind of weird because I don't normally get those very often, now I'm getting two in one month, but, you know, whatever, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm reviewing The Bands of Mourning, which is the final Mistborn book, at least the final one that's out so far, uh, and by then it should be May, and in May, I don't know exactly when, I'm going to be releasing uh, a scripted video about the rise and fall of Artemis Fowl, which should be a lot of fun. And then I have a scripted video all about World War Z, which should also be pretty great. And uh, somewhere in there, once I'm finished with all the reviews, I'm going to start reading the House of Night books so that I can get in and do a whole thing on that. So that should be a lot of fun. But, you know, and none of that's set in stone, but, you know, that's how it is. But anyways, The Strain. So, The Strain is basically a modern take on vampires. You know, it, it's actually kind of a combination of the old vampire myths and modern zombie outbreak stories, because vampirism is like a uh, virus which, uh, which, when people get infected, it kills them and then sort of brings them back in a different form, and then they go after you, only instead of eating your brains or eating your flesh, they're trying to drink your blood. And if they drink your blood, then it spreads, and it just gets bigger and bigger from there. So. Yeah, it's like a combination of the two. And originally, Guillermo del Toro actually wanted to make this into a movie, but he just wasn't able to do it for whatever reason. So he wrote this series of books with Chuck Hogan, and then it got popular enough that he was able to turn it into a television show, which I have seen, and I think the television show is really, really good. It's on Hulu, by the way, if you have that. Hashtag not sponsored. But anyways, I think it's really good. Not to say it doesn't have issues, but... Yeah, it, the show is better than the book. Uh, that said, I'm gonna try and talk about the book a little bit more on its own merits, because it came first. Now, um, that said, the plot of this is... Well, it's structured kind of like a thriller, but also kind of like a movie. And that's what I mean when I say Guillermo del Toro's skill as a filmmaker doesn't really translate into skill as a novelist, because the structure of a movie or a television show is different from the structure of a book. And, for example, uh, the characters in this, most of them, uh, particularly the main character, Ephraim, when he is first introduced, it's like, it starts in a scene where he's just in his apartment playing video games with his son, and then it goes into his whole backstory about his divorce, and how much he loves his son, and uh, the issues he had with his wife, and... Uh, how much his job as a doctor at the CDC means to him, and all that. And, like, that's most of his development right there is given to you in, like, a page, and that's... Well, it's kind of obnoxious. And I know that's a common thing in uh, thrillers, uh, especially thrillers that are aimed at adult men, like, you know, those paperback books that you buy at, like, the airport? You know, that that's pretty common, and I guess... Some people are okay with that, but honestly, I find it super obnoxious, because it does that with most every character in this book, uh, with the exception of Abraham Satrakian. And Satrakian is, like, this old Holocaust survivor who uh, ran into vampires, or as he calls them, Strigoi, uh, back during World War II, and learned, oh, shit, these are real, and he spent pretty much the rest of his life hunting them. And so when this book starts, uh, he realizes what's going on before anybody else, and so he actually meets up with Ephraim and some others, and he tries to help them, or rather they try to help him, might be a more accurate way of putting it, um, bring the plague to an end before it can get out of control. Now, plot-wise, this book is... Mm, man, I'm, I'm not sure if I like it or not, because like I said, its structure 
is kind of clumsy and doesn't work all that well in the form of a book, but it starts off amazing. It, it actually starts off better than the TV show, I think, because uh, at the very beginning, a plane lands at an airport in New York City, and it just goes completely dark, like, all everything shuts off, and then they go inside, and everybody on board is dead. Like, they have no idea what killed them, and so they bring in the Center for Disease Control, and that's how Ephraim and them get involved, and they just look at it, and they're like, yeah, I don't know what killed these people. Uh, but then the bodies go missing, and then they start coming back to life as, you know, as vampires, and they go around killing people. And, uh, the thing is, in the show, um, the audience had a pretty good idea of what was going on from the beginning, at least a general idea, like, all the smaller details you found out along with the characters, whereas in the book, um, the audience and the characters have no clue what's happening at first, so you're finding it out with them, and it does an amazing job of building up tension and just making you uh, really afraid for what's going to happen next, and making you realize, okay, yeah, these guys have to get this shit under control or a lot of people are going to die. So that's, that's pretty great. Um, that said, it also goes on a little too long in that uh, building tension uh, era, I think. In fact, I would say this book should have been longer because, excuse me, um, yeah, the first, like, two-thirds of it, or the first half of it, excuse me, again, the first half to two-thirds of it is, like, just building tension, and, well, there's, like, very little release in there anywhere, so when the climax comes, it feels like it goes down a little too quick, and that's just a little disappointing to me. Like, it's not awful, but a little disappointing. And so I wish that this book had just been a little longer, like, let's say 60, 70 pages longer, so that they could add a few more steps in between them uh, finding out what's going on and confronting the master, as he's called. Not to mention that more time also would have allowed them to have character developments in there somewhere. Like, I, I get it, this is just the first in a trilogy, and there will most likely be some more later on. I don't know how closely the show follows these books. Like, the first one is followed pretty closely, but I don't know about the second and third ones. But anyways, it would have been great for there to be some other character development in there, and, well, there, there really isn't that much, other than, again, Abraham Satrakian, who his backstory is revealed through a series of flashbacks which are spread throughout the book, which is... A very good way of doing it. And quite frankly, the prose in this, the actual writing itself, is not good. Okay, it it spends a little bit too long describing actions. Like, the, the way I would put it is that it's very good at describing scenery, uh, particularly when it's describing, like, the vampires and what they look like, and it, it does a great job of making them feel grotesque, because you'll get, like, entire paragraphs just describing uh, how their skin is pale, and how their eyes are dead, and how uh, they have, like, stingers in their mouths, and what those look like, and um, it'll go into detail about, like, s dead bodies after they've been killed and stuff, and it really does make everything feel grotesque and uh, unpleasant, which, you know, this story... I don't know if I'd call it a horror story, but it definitely has a lot of horror elements, so it's great that they did that. But when it's describing people's actions, like, it should... Us you should usually keep those not to a minimum necessarily, but uh, you shouldn't spend too long on it because then action scenes and stuff can get really bogged down. Like, just say, he swung his sword, cut off the beast's head, something like that, rather than... He swung his sword like a baseball player. It reminded him of when he was a kid and used to play baseball, and he usually really loved all the blah, 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 blah. Like, this book has moments where it goes on like that, and it really drags the whole thing down. Like, this could have been uh, a really quick-paced uh, story after, you know, after all the tension has been built up and we already realize, okay, yeah, fucking vampires and shit. Like... That could have been great, um, but as it stands, the action scenes are... Well, they're not great. And one last thing I want to mention that did bother me is that, well... This doesn't really have a villain. Well, okay, it does have a villain, but it doesn't focus on him all that much. Like, 
Uh, in the show, we have, uh, you know, the master. He's the head of the vampires, and he is the overall villain. But um, we don't see him all that often. We mostly see his lieutenant, who is this old German Nazi who is now a vampire. Um, and in the show, he's, you know, he's pretty good. Like, he is the one that we see the most, so they got a decent actor to play him, and he comes across as intimidating, yada, yada, yada. Whereas in the book, it's just the master, and because we don't see him that often, we don't really have a focus uh, for the heroes to be fighting against. You know, it's just, okay, yeah, they're fighting the vampire horde. And I feel like that drags it down a bit, uh, especially because uh, Satrakian, again, he's an old Holocaust survivor, so having somebody who was a Nazi is a pretty big deal in the show, whereas in the book, we, we just don't get any focus like that, and, well, that's, that's really disappointing. Now, I want to reiterate, like, I know I was complaining about this a lot, but I enjoyed this book. I thought it was decent, you know. Um, if you want to get the story, I would recommend the show, because, again, the book is just, it feels like they took the structure, the story structure of a movie and glommed it onto a book, and that just didn't work super well, and... I don't know if Guillermo or Chuck Hogan is to blame for the prose, but, like, you know, it's just clunky, and I didn't like it that much. But, um, yeah, if you got nothing better to do, or if you couldn't get into the show for whatever reason, but you think that the concept is really awesome, then I'd go ahead and check it out. Uh, and, for, for that matter, I should mention that this book came out during, like, the midst of the Twilight and Vampire craze, so... That was when we were getting books like Twilight or Vampire Academy or The Vampire Diaries and, you know, shit like that. And so having vampires like this who, you know, meant business and were coming out and they were going to fucking kill you, that would definitely be really refreshing uh, if you read it back then. Whereas nowadays that's kind of faded, so I, I don't know how others would feel about that. I really don't. Like, obviously all of this is opinion, but this one is going to be really, really dependent on what you're looking for. Thanks a bunch for watching, and thanks a whole bunch especially to all my patrons, including my $10 and up patrons, Apo Savalainen, Brother Santodes, Charles Go, Christopher Hawkins, Christopher Quinten, Joel, Joseph Pendergraft, Taylor Briggs, and Tobacco Crow. That, <laughs> that list is getting, that, that list is getting pretty long, but, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate it, couldn't do it without you guys, and if you watched this far, thanks a bunch. Please like the video, comment on the video, and subscribe to my channel. And, well, I would imagine a lot of you have already done that, but if you haven't, then do that, and I will see you next time.